So we, we started out once again with non-ploy stuff, and this time we worked with a partner. I cannot be assistant. Cannot be assistant. Um, started out imagining an imaginary wall in between us. This is like one of the walls of our imaginary hallway. This is an exercise to help keep clean planes while spinning. We started out on the horizon with our arms on that horizontal focus point, and we just played with same time, same direction, just rolling our hands all the way around. You want gentle contact with your partner, and you want to allow your hands to roll all the way around the back of the hands and the palms. So that way, your fingers can always, always, always point in the right direction. And as you get comfortable with this, you can start to play with turning the torso back and forth to help smooth out this movement and make it less work for the arms. Then, we of course did both ways. Then we did opposites, which is a little trickier. Tai Chi arms. The focus points, once again, are those horizontal points, kind of at shoulder height, where we're both reaching out to the side there. But there's also important secondary focus points right up here at the top, where we want to make sure we're on our, our center line keep this flowing nicely. And as you get comfortable with this, you can really allow the turning of the torso to help move to the center line and eventually the other side of the scissor. So we played with that. We played doing that by ourselves as well. <laughs> <laughs> and like if you want something to kind of keep track of your focus points while you're doing this, we were doing get lined up on your center line. You can snap on the center line, one up, one down, clap on the horizon, snap on the center line, clap, snap, clap, snap, clap, snap, snap. We eventually played with uh, turning this, so that, that super important horizontal meeting point is also that's the point where you're turning through, stepping around. Your arms become parallel for so that moment? as your arms are coming towards the horizon there to become parallel, that's when you step over to the other side so that you're circling on the other wall. So now I'm circling on this wall. And as I come to the side, that's where I step to turn to the other wall. Now, it will feel like your arms switch directions because in terms of how they're rotating in your shoulder sockets, they do. But if you notice, like my right arm is always falling down the window, falling down the window, even when I turn, that's still the case. And that can help keep you acclimated and make sure you didn't accidentally switch into something else on accident as you turn. And so we eventually, we even faced down the hallway where it's kind of impossible to keep your arms, your arms can't really keep going so good unless you turn from side to side. So what we did was, once again, like maybe the right arm is going down in front, the left arm is going up, that's one way you can do it. They keep going that direction, you turn to the side, go up the back, all the way down in front again. You can go the other side that way. And no matter what you do, it's always gonna come back to the same position where one, the same hand is going down, the same hand is going up. So you follow your little like hand rocket ships around. Really, this, this helps you to do continuous turns. I mean, to, to cover uh, some walking and turning real quick. Basically, whenever you make a half turn, that's essentially the equivalent of half turn forward, half turn forward is the equivalent of stepping. Half turn backward, half turn backward is the equivalent of stepping backward. But when you alternate front side turn, back side turn, you're pivoting around while moving in a straight line. And we put it all together. It was really awesome you guys picked that. With our split time opposite arms, focusing on our focus points on the horizon, spotting as we step, spotting the other wall as we step away from it. Spot where I'm going, spot where I'm going away from. Towards away, towards away, towards away, so on and so forth. And you just be spinning around in a way so as to undo the cut and undo by yourself. <laughs> so same thing with your
your poi, you're spinning your split time butterfly here, and you want to turn with it, as your poi scissor right there, you can step around and do a reverse, or other way, split time butterfly is not really a reverse, but it's definitely spinning the opposite way. And, you know, you can play with this long arm. But eventually, if you start playing with flower patterns, this applies. And notice how I'm making my little petals at those four cardinal directions. We also played with just swinging the boy, right? Small pendulum, really kind of trying to get your pendulum up to the horizon. And it stops at the horizon and falls back down, doing that long <laughs> arm. Feeling how your torso can turn to allow your arm to more smoothly pendulum your boy. As per usual, to work on cleaning up your planes, if you swing or spin close to a wall, now I have this situation where I obviously can't get too close to the wall, so my, my body is just subconsciously working on straight planes, and of course I can't hit my leg. So very naturally, you're just going to keep fitting it right in there on a straight plane next to the wall, and this will help you clean up your planes really nicely. We also played with starting to make kind of pendulum circle, throwing the pendulum, where our arms kind of circling around. We can draw essentially something like a circle with the boy head, but you're not actually spinning the boy. It's just kind of like you're rowing a boat. Continuing to work on nice plane control while swinging pendulums. And we did some long versions. We got the long arm going and drag that. This was the home play, you said, right? This is, yeah, for home play. See if you can maybe even work your way up to eventually being able to switch every time. With the weave, you see how she just initiated that. She had to swing for a forward weave under my poi first, and then come back. So whoever initiates has like a little extra job. They do like a little intro. But if you're spinning backwards, Okay, I'll throw that in there. Let's go in reverse. If you're spinning backwards, it's upside down. So that means if I want to initiate, I go over the top to initiate. Ah. So, and this is in general, backwards tends to equal up and forwards tends to equal down or under. And before we did the 3-beat, we, we did the 2-beat, some of us. So a 2-beat is just I'll initiate by going under and then come back, and we'll do that over and over again. And if you get used to if you get used to either one person plays initiator for the while and then the other person plays initiator for the while, then you're both you're both good at initiating and you can do a two beat with either hand on top. Switch 